why study abuse of men separately? Because uh, I think abuse is abuse when you come down to the bottom line. But uh, reactions on abuse is different. I used to talk about the great silence because I wrote my first book on this topic in 2001. Hmm. And that was a book about, uh, uh, unfortunately, in Norwegian, not in English. <laughs> but it was, it was uh, I interviewed men on, on, uh, uh, that had been abused in a Christian religious setting. And I remember the reactions on this book because it was silence. Hmm. But I tried to talk about it. People sort of backed off. They didn't know what to say. And what is sort of uh, strange is that this seemed to, it has changed, but not very much. This is an unpleasant temp uh, topic for people to talk about. But on the other side, if you talk about victimizing of, of girls and, 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 and women, just remember me too. I mean, mm. we're talking about it the whole time, but not about the man. Although Me Too is a fairly recent uh, phenomenon, um, of course. And I know that you've written about this, uh, these stereotypes, gender stereotypes, and maybe yeah. we'll get into more of that a bit later. Um, I'm just wondering if maybe even abuse of uh, of uh, women and girls has also been suppressed very often. Um, sure. But I see I see what you're saying about the the dimension of the sort of image of manliness, um, which is something that comes up, which is it, it, it kind of creates a um, difficult paradox with the nature of victimhood. Um, but uh, sorry, that's a lot of different questions, but maybe you can address those things. No, a but bit. I think that if you go back uh, years, actually, we can thank the women for uh, the fact that this has been brought up at all, because around the, the 50s, when the, you know, the, the, the feminist movement started and they brought up uh, abuse of women uh, and and made it up, you know, and, and brought it up. And I think that then we could start to talk about people being abused, you know. And you got the crisis centers and you got the incest centers and, and, and the whole movement. Mm -hmm. uh, at that, uh, that point in time, a few years ago, it was like, the men are the, the men are the abusers, the women are the victims. This is about to turn around now because the abuse of men also by women as abusers is getting more and more into the light. Slowly but surely it does. So so uh, but what what is so what is difficult for men uh, compared to women, because women are sort of <laughs> And please don't misunderstand me, but women are supposed to uh, are are used to to be in a victim position. It's an accepted position that a, a woman is a victim, but not a man. So, are you referring to sort of cultural constructs that go yeah. all the way back to you know fairy tales and things like this, the exactly. damsel in distress, and okay. Mm -hmm. And this seemed to be, and this seemed to be universal, as far as I'm concerned. And, and uh, so a man is not a victim, and a victim is not a man, to, to put it short. So when a man is abused, whether it's by a man or a woman, it is an attack on him. And it means everything that he should not be according to the manliness norms hmm. in society, you know. Well, you spoke about silence, and um, so I'd like to just give a quote or two from your article that is called Speaking About the Unspeakable, yeah. Sexually Abused Men Striving Toward Language. Uh, Interesting yeah. title. And um, by the way, I'm sure we have some readers of Norwegian in the audience as well, so they may be interested in your, your writings that are available um, oh. only in your native language also. But uh. this one is in English. 
And uh, you say there, quote, the man as aggressor is a predominant cultural construct. The perpetrator is male and the victim is female. Yeah. End quote. And in another place in that article, you say sexually abused males tend to feel marginalized and different. Hmm. However, when given the opportunity, they offer alternative discourses of manliness with the potential for bringing sexually abused males out of the shadows, hmm. assisting them in better understanding, dealing with, and explaining their experiences to themselves and others. 